Hello there, I'm Mike and welcome to Disney Parks Addict. Today, we'll be taking a look at all the rides and attractions in the Disneyland Park at the Disneyland Paris Resort. The park opened in 1992 as Euro Disneyland and is the second largest Disneyland park in the world at a whopping 140 acres. After a turbulent opening and a few name changes, Disneyland Paris is now the most visited park in Europe and delights guests from all over the world. This year, they are celebrating their 30th anniversary, which includes some unique entertainment that you can see a little later in the video. You enter the park into the classic Main Street USA, but before that, you will need to walk under under the first attraction. It is of course the Disneyland Railway. This train takes you all around the park with stations at Main Street, Frontierland, Fantasyland and Discoveryland. It also features unique dioramas and even takes you inside some of the attractions around the park. Unlike other Disney parks around the world, the first land that you come to as you reach the end of Main Street USA and head to the left is Frontierland, rather than the usual Adventureland. The first attraction you will see is Big Thunder Mountain. This popular minecart roller coaster has similarities to the Magic Kingdom version in Orlando, Florida, but with a totally unique layout. It is mainly located on an island in the middle of the rivers of the far west where Tom Sawyer's Island would normally sit. It's a great coaster that offers amazing views of other attractions in Frontierland and the rest of the Disneyland Paris Resort. Next is Phantom Manor. This dark ride is Disneyland Paris's version of a haunted mansion attraction which can be found at other Disney parks around the world. Although it is similar to the other haunted mansions, it has been designed to be darker and scarier than previous versions and offers a unique storyline and soundtrack. Similar to Big Thunder Mountain, this was an opening day attraction but has gone through various updates throughout the years. You can take a ride on either of the two riverboats at the Thunder Mesa Riverboat Landing. The two riverboats are Mark Twain, based on the original Disneyland version, and the unique Molly Brown, named after the famous Titanic survivor. Each riverboat features a recorded conversation with the captain and either Mark Twain or Molly Brown as they discuss the different attractions within Frontierland. This is a great way to have a little break and take in the beautiful sights and sounds within this amazing immersive land. For the little ones, you can visit the Frontier Playground. This features canoe-shaped slides, teepees, and other small playground activities that are perfect for the younger guests. You will also be able to find the Frontierland Theatre, which is currently showing Lion King, Rhythm of the Pride Lands. This is an amazing and unique show that features acrobats, dancers, and singers as they perform all your favorite songs from the Lion King movie. There are plenty of restaurants and other smaller attractions within Frontierland, which makes it a great way to start your day in the Disneyland Paris Park. The next land you come to as you walk through the connected walkways is Adventureland, and my favorite land in the park. This Adventureland has four different areas, with the first being the Adventureland Bazaar, with Middle Eastern influences and houses the walkthrough attraction, Aladdin's Enchanted Passage. This attraction features a series of different scenes from the classic Disney animation, Aladdin. The next area has more of an African inspiration and mainly features shops and restaurants. And at the back of Adventureland is the mysterious Asian jungle, which is home to the amazing roller coaster Indiana Jones and the Temple of Peril. This was the first roller coaster to feature an inversion at any Disney park when it opened in 1993. You are taken on an adventure on a mining train through a lost temple as you help Indiana Jones escape. The final area of Adventureland, and by far the largest, is inspired by the Caribbean. You can go to the Adventure Isle, which is comprised of two different islands and four different attractions. On the North Island is the classic Swiss Family Treehouse, which has more details than any version found at other Disney parks around the world. You can go under the tree, where you can explore a network of caves filled with roots and hidden walkways, and was used as a Swiss Family's cellar. You can also find a wrecked ship that the castaways originally used. On the South Island, you can find Captain Hook's ship moored near Skull Rock, where you can meet Mr. Smee and Peter Pan's nemesis, Captain Hook. You can find two playgrounds at the Pirate's Beach that has plenty of rope ladders, slides, and you can even walk the plank. The last part of Adventure Isle is the huge mountain known as Spyglass Hill. It is mainly composed of mazes and caves where you can search for the hidden treasure. Some caves even reference the 1950 Disney movie Treasure Island. 
The final attraction in Adventureland is the guest favourite, Pirates of the Caribbean. This floating dark ride is most similar to the original Disneyland version and is the second longest version with a ride duration of 10 minutes and 30 seconds. It takes you through various scenes of battles, a town being raided by pirates, and of course the infamous Jack Sparrow makes an appearance. If you're only going to ride one ride in Adventureland, then this has to be it. We now move on to the land with the most attractions, Fantasyland. The first attraction is right underneath the beautiful Sleeping Beauty Castle, and that is the Dragon's Lair. This walkthrough attraction takes you to a dimly lit cavern and features a 27 meter long dragon that was the largest audio animatronic that Disney Imagineering had ever created when the park opened in 1992. Don't worry, the dragon is sleeping, but you'll still need to be careful not to wake it. Inside the Sleeping Beauty Castle, if you scale the stone steps, you can enjoy another walkthrough attraction. This is a retelling of the famous fairy tale through the use of illustrated books, rich tapestries, and beautiful stained glass windows. Back into the main section of Fantasyland is Lancelot's Carousel. This is similar to the other carousels found at the various Disney parks around the world, and it is best to ride this attraction at night so you can experience all the amazing lights around Fantasyland and within the carousel itself. There are also three classic dark rides in Fantasyland, the first being Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. You'll see Snow White meeting the dwarfs, the evil queen creating her master plan, and of course the prince saving the day. The the next dark ride is Pinocchio's Fantastic Journey, which will take you through scenes that feature the Stromboli Circus, Pleasure Island, Monstro the Whale, and other characters from the 1940 animated film. The final classic dark ride is Peter Pan's Flight, which is one of the most popular attractions in the park. You board the flying pirate ship as you travel through scenes in London and Neverland. This version is slightly longer than the original, with an extended scene of flying over London at night. From one classic to another, Dumbo the Flying Elephant is an aerial carousel style ride that is perfect for younger guests. This is the only attraction that can be found at all six Disney castle parks worldwide, so you know it's a fan favourite. Alice's Curious Labyrinth is a hedge maze attraction that takes you through different scenes from the 1951 animated version of the film. It is comprised of two sections. The Tolgi Woods focuses on Alice's journey through Wonderland and all the characters she meets. The second section is the Queen of Hearts maze, where you'll finally reach the Queen's Castle, which will give you amazing views of Fantasyland and other areas of Disneyland Paris. Next is another Alice in Wonderland themed attraction, the Mad Hatter's Teacups. This spinning teacup ride can be found at four other Disney parks, but this is the only version to feature a petal shaped glass roof and surrounding gardens. Next up is everybody's favourite dark ride on water. Of course, It's a Small World needs no introduction, with its catchy song and iconic Mary Blair style audio animatronic dolls dressed in traditional costumes from cultures around the world. Disneyland Paris' version has a completely different facade and is the only one to feature a section of dolls from North America. Unfortunately, at the date of this video, It's a Small World is currently under renovation, but is planned to reopen later in 2022. The Storybook Land Canal boats will take you on a leisurely paced outdoor boat ride through a winding canal featuring settings from Disney animated films recreated in miniature. This is a perfect way to relax and take in the different stories that Disney has shown us over its 70 year history. The final attraction in Fantasyland is the Casey Jr. Circus Train. This is a roller coaster for small children which has great views of the Storybook Land Castle and other scenes that are featured in the Storybook Land Canal Boats. We now move on to the final land within Disneyland Paris Park, which is the amazing Discovery Land. This is of course known as Tomorrowland at other Disney parks, but this version has a completely different aesthetic as it uses influences from Leonardo da Vinci, HG Wells, and most notably Jules Verne, which creates a completely unique and wonderful setting. The first attraction that you will come to is Star Tours The Adventure Continues. This 3D motion simulator takes you on a journey with C-3PO and R2-D2 and has great rewritability, as there are randomized scenes from all the different movies, which creates 54 different combinations, so each time feels new and exciting. Sticking with the Star Wars theme, you have to check out Hyperspace Mountain. This was previously known as Space Mountain Mission 2, but to celebrate the park's 25th anniversary, a Star Wars overlay was added to this exciting roller coaster. This is the only Space Mountain to feature inversions and a section of the track that exits and re-enters the 
interior. It's my favourite attraction at Disneyland Paris, so I hope you go and try it out. Next is Buzz Lightyear Laser Blast. This shooting dark ride takes you to battle the evil Emperor Zerg as you fight alongside Buzz Lightyear and the Space Command. Do you have what it takes to be a galactic hero? There is a spinning rocket attraction named Orbitron Machine for Lance. Instead of a rocket at its central axis, this version resembles a bronze 19th century rotating planetarium and is also the first version of the attraction to be installed at ground level instead of atop an elevated platform. Next is Autopia, which lets guests steer specially designed cars through an enclosed track. This is perfect for younger guests that love cars and want to experience the drive of a lifetime. The Mysteries of the Nautilus is a walkthrough attraction based on the movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. You can explore Captain Nemo's submarine and even see the battle with a giant squid. The final attraction in Discoveryland is Mickey's PhilharMagic. This 4D show features 3D effects, scents and water as well as a number of different characters and scenes from Disney animations. Recently there has been a new scene added featuring characters from the popular Coco movie so make sure you go and check it out. To celebrate the park's 30th anniversary, they have created a brand new parade and show called Dream and Shine Brighter. This takes place in the central plaza and is filled with lots of characters, dancing and plenty of your favourite Disney songs. And don't worry, you will still be able to catch the popular Disney Stars on Parade which celebrates the discovery of the lands of imagination, represented by various Disney and Pixar films such as Toy Story, The Jungle Book, the Lion King, Finding Nemo, Sleeping Beauty, and Frozen. If you have ever seen a Disney parade before, then you know they are not to be missed. Also, for their 30th anniversary, Disneyland Paris have created a new nighttime spectacular called Disney Delight. This uses special drone technology to create a light choreography that illuminates the sky over Sleeping Beauty Castle. It is then followed by the classic Disney Illuminations, which uses projection mapping on the castle, water fountains, fire, music, other special effects, and of course fireworks to create a special nighttime show filled with all your favorite Disney songs and characters which is the perfect way to end your night at this great Disney park. If you're looking to visit Disneyland Paris, then check out Attraction Tix. They are currently selling park tickets for 49% off the gate price and they also offer great deals on Disney and non-Disney hotels in the Disneyland Paris Resort area. Go check out my affiliate link in the description box below to make a saving on your next Disney vacation. If you enjoyed the video then don't forget to hit the like button and if you want to help support the channel then check out my new Patreon page that offers a selection of added benefits at the four different tiers. Just check the link in the description box below. And if you want to know more about the Disneyland Paris Resort, then check out this attraction guide for the park next door, Walt Disney Studios, right here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Disney Parks Addict.